I'm Priscilla Lombardi, and here is some of what made news in health in 2014. Ebola virus took center stage in national headlines this year with increasing fatalities since March. The CDC reports there have been a total of over 18,000 cases and almost 7,000 deaths with widespread transmission, mainly in countries within West Africa. So far, the CDC reports there have been four cases in the U.S. with one death. We spoke with Stanford Hospital doctor Michael Perry, who says local hospitals are prepared and residents should not be worried. It's not airborne. It's contact. You'd have to be in contact with a person or body fluids of that person. Since the enterovirus D68 hit locally this year with the first reported case at Yale New Haven Children's Hospital, it has affected mainly children. Currently, there is no vaccination for the respiratory virus, which the CDC reports has affected over 1,000 people in the U.S. from mid-August to December of this year. Enterovirus D68 is, uh, is a type of virus that causes respiratory disease primarily in children. Um, it's not a virus that has been seen with any sort of frequency, um, if at all, since 1962 when it was first identified, I believe, in California. Vicki Smitek at Norwalk Hospital says parents should closely monitor their children for signs of illness, especially if that child has asthma. One key message would be don't panic, um, followed quickly by but if your child is exhibiting symptoms of difficulty breathing, please, please bring them to medical attention in a timely fashion. Public awareness on the health consequences of concussions has grown over the years, and this year Governor Daniel Malloy signed a law that imposes new standards on schools for the prevention and treatment of concussions. Concussion is an injury to the brain, and an injury to a brain can be all different types of severity. It can be something very mild to something that we see with war injuries that lead to a traumatic brain injury. The challenge is that there is no test that really tells us the true severity of a concussion. This November, Stanford Hospital's Orthopedic and Spine Institute opened a comprehensive concussion center specializing in individualized care and administering cognitive testing. It's one of the first in Fairfield County. Resting doesn't always cure concussions. Um, in the beginning, it's helpful, but uh, we take a very active approach to treatment, um, whether it be f figuring out what level of cognitive exertion or physical exertion an individual can engage in, um, but also that there's physical therapy that can sometimes help. This summer, the Ice Bucket Challenge took the internet by storm, raising public awareness of ALS and raising $100 million in donations for the ALS Association. ALS, otherwise known as Lou Gehrig's disease, affects between 250 and 300 Connecticut residents. ALS is a neuromuscular degenerative disease that is always fatal, for which there's no cure and no treatment. Essentially what happens is the brain, as you know, tries to send signals to muscles, and that's what makes us move around, breathe, talk, and everything else that we do. Unfortunately, with ALS patients, the signal doesn't get to the muscles, and gradually, sometimes very rapidly, the muscles atrophy or die. Breast cancer is the second leading cause of death in women, affecting one in eight women in the U.S. The American Cancer Society estimates over 232,000 new cases of breast cancer have been diagnosed in women in 2014. And studies have shown death rates have declined due to improved treatment and earlier detection through screening. Stanford Hospital and Greenwich Hospital are now using 3D mammography technology, which doctors say increases breast cancer detection rates. We're finding more cancer, we're finding smaller cancers, we're finding cancers only with a 3D mammography, and we're not taking extra pictures on the women who don't need it. We are able to find cancers more easily, and we are finding a lot of really small cancers that we would have not picked up before ever. I'm Priscilla Lombardi, and that's some of what made news in health in 2014.